Hey everybody and welcome back to Age of Bison. We're casting our 2v2 tournament. Hopefully you guys have been able to see game 1 and 2 of the Team P versus Vindian Gideon series. Um, I am joined here today by Stefan. Stefan, how's it going? Hello! I'm experiencing a little bit of PTSD currently staring at Panama while talking with Platt. This yeah. is... <laughs> I, I, I think you and I experienced, at least for me, the worst non-Mexico related game I've ever played. <laughs> Uh, in DE on this map on a team game where they just spammed Reuters and Japan did Japan things and it was just like pure cancer. We ended up basically throwing it to try to trade Monopoly yeah, we, in the center. Yeah, we basically threw after an hour and a half because it was just, it was cancer, it was death, and I'm hoping we don't see that here. <laughs> yes. So again, uh, before we start here, like I said, um, for a quick recap, game one, speaking of Mexico, I, I've you know, forsaken any dignity uh, and morality. And I played Mexico in game one, me and Pete, very commanding. Um, game two, hopefully you guys, have, you know, gotten to watch that one. Vindian and Gideon, you know, the Empire strikes back, right? The the Empire of off-meta strikes back and totally kicks our butt. So this is now a showdown. Um, every game we played against these guys historically goes to a, you know, match point um, or a final series. So... This is kind of for all the bragging rights, um, so to speak, between the two of us uh, teams and, and really different types of philosophy. So without further ado, let's get into this game. Um, starting here on the right side, we have myself and my boy Pete as Malta, Russia. Over here in the left, we've got Vindian as his old faithful Japan and Gideon playing as Sweden. Um, Stefan, any thoughts on this map and matchup in particular? Well, we're, just, we're definitely going to see a bit of a different behavior out of Gideon. From, at least, he's not playing USA like we saw in the last couple. So, he, we're not going to see that same, same natives play out of here, out of him here. But this is Panama. This is a can turn, be an absolutely cancerous map because you've got this. Like it ends up being super defensive. And what we see here is that Vindian has rolled the back position on Panama, which is exactly where you don't want your opponent's Japanese player to go because he is nice and hidden. So we're going to be seeing a lot of defensive play here, and it's a lot of, you know, it's a brutal grind, and at the same time, tons of resources on this map. You've got both of these, you know, oceans there, lots of fish. You've got the fast mining treasure ships. Like, this is... Panama is one of those maps where it can just turn into a grind fest. But on the flip side, with you guys, with you, Platt, sitting on Malta, a grind fest might be what you need. Because you start rolling in those shipments, and you're going to start really picking up steam. So I think we can see we might see some interesting uh, interactions here. Exactly. You know, Pete and I, uh, that was our thoughts going in with our Civ selection, right? Is these are two civs that love H2. Uh, it's a bit risky because neither of them necessarily likes to FF, but uh, we, you know, we're basically hoping to start putting pressure on early and just never take the foot off the, you know, their gas the whole game. Um, Vindian and Gideon, I believe their strategy was a bit of a one, two where, you know, Vindian would do his classic boom and Gideon would use his um, unique take on Sweden to kind of keep us off center and off keel. So instead of Sweden booming and Japan going up first, he's kind of banking on Sweden's speed a bit. So looking at his deck name, first off, Gideon, always, I think, the king when it comes to uh, deck <laughs> names. Man, a planet canal, Panama, right? Um, mm -hmm. Looking at this, uh, it looks like he is going for some sort of hand infantry or hand cavalry buff also heavy infantry native treaty so you said earlier it might not go natives well don't ever no, yeah. <laughs> count get a bunch of mercs and natives a bunch as well. of mercs good shipment options for boats i, I don't and see English definitely mercs. looks like interesting so he's not going for a heavy tort boom here okay um Pretty fairly standard Japan deck here. Uh, other than the Outlaws, again, loves his Outlaws. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Pete while everyone's aging up here. Water 2v2. Yep, pretty standard deck. 
Um, some Opries in it, right? Which can be really good on a oh, big map. Oh, in the hands of Pete. Yeah. In the hands of Pete. If you've played against Pete as this Russia, you know. You just know. Um, also, Spice Trade and Medicine can be a bit greedy, but if you're doing a long H2, man, it's Russia. That's like almost two TCs out of one. And a Malta deck. Give me uh, two water later. Yeah, pretty standard. Um, and as everybody's aging up, uh, I'm aging up with the Quartermaster. Pete's aging up, I believe, with the... He's about to age up with He's the Quartermaster. Yeah. Yep, 17 market start for Russia. I'm also doing a market start for Malta. Now, smarter players may recognize that there's a TP and market start, but I've been mainly just stick with markets because I am slow <laughs> um what japan now up with the tory gates so gates. interesting so vindian kind of expecting early pressure and i would guess the governor yep um probably one of the most standard plays for h2 aggression um malta already up that's the nice thing about the market stars you get up really fast putting down my hospitals i see there's a shrine here so you know Gideon Vidian, good job using the shrines to get line of sight. Right, Dave. Okay. Sending in, getting your pikes going immediately. Mm -hmm. On shrine burden duty. Mm -hmm. You know, and also getting all my eco techs in. You know, again, with Malta, I feel like people are starting to finally realize that German Tongue, while an amazing card, you know, often you just kind of got to skip it and keep it in the deck for much later. Yeah, German Tongue is a great card, but it's such an expense. And it has the trap aspect of you want to start getting out those settler wagons rapidly. So it can sink a lot of resources into it and in a situation where you really need to be getting units out like right now where you are where you're getting these units out immediately to start burning shrines and that i absolutely agree with your play here this is what you want to be doing exactly At very least take out line of sight but you know get vindian doing a great job to torp everywhere fun fact too even though he's mining uh these are enhanced the torps by the uh treasure ships <laughs> i did not know that interaction was there mm -hmm. And now sending in uh, Wignacourt. I may call it Winning Court uh, just because I've memed that so long, so I do apologize in advance. But, I mean, it's it's a nutty card. <laughs> Triple Carni Mata. You know, base 10% Carni Mata stats on all of your villagers, 20% when they're near a defensive building. And, man, in adding that on top of these treasure ships, you're just going to be pulling in coin if you're mining at all. Exactly. So now Vindian again, torping the top. Really excellent job there by Vindian. And Gideon opens with a saloon. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if this was in one of our, our 1v1 games we saw. Yep, Pirates. Pirates. Well, I think if you're watching this, you you know, win or lose, I think Gideon just won the style points. Mm. Nagi Nagi. I mean, treasure ships, pirates. Yeah. Oh. It jives. And look at that, they send two Caravel right off the bat, which forces us kind of into the interior. Um, really smart mm -hmm. play there. And of course, you know, w the way that the pathing works with reinforcements, right? They're going to get a lot of value out of those ships, I think. Um, we come in, Pete instantly looking for tasty vills, and I'm just kind of content to burn a torque. Again, a real fast comparison before a big fight. 27 coin on that, 45 on that. Amazing and good job from Gindian. Uh, now he's building pistol arrows. Not the best. And here are his pirates. So yar. Yep, yar. Yar indeed. Um, yeah. Oof, getting some bot shots off for free. Mm -hmm. And again, doing a good job holding back. He's about to get another pop and. And just like that, they now decide to take the fight. Crossbow's a little bit out of place, and those pirates get right on top. Nagi's mm -hmm. doing what they do best, right? Uh, my pike's running around. Minutemen are called. This is looking uh, pretty dicey, but pretty good here for Vindian and Gideon. 
Yeah. You know, and again, they're, they're able to just to get this chip damage. Just really good use of those caravals. Yeah. yeah. Looks like the Nagis, though, getting hit, kissed by pikes the entire time. Mm -hmm. Um... And now the Ashigaru are out, and Team P here, we are on the back foot. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, you have that nice hard point, hard point that you've set up, so you're relatively at least safe from being pushed, unless they try to do a sneaky sneaky with those caravels. It's funny that you say that, because I believe... Yep, look at this. The yep. Woku jump. <laughs> Right, so obviously that's exactly what they're thinking. Um, Pete, trickling units forward, loses some for free, but it does kind of force them back. And I think for now, they didn't get any. They got to look at the score. And again, they've already took a commanding lead, right? They're looking extremely well at this point. Me and Pete are basically like, well, it's time to grind. Now, Russia underscores and Malta in the early game also does, just because of the way it mm -hmm. works. Um, it takes time for its cards to pay off, and it doesn't calculate things. I'm not, you know, get someone smarter than me can explain it. Uh, but everyone's faced a multiplayer and seen their score as anemic. And now again, Vindian, I think throughout this thing, you might see this a few times, but I think in hindsight, he uses the select all military hockey. Oh, so they, they come out from their nice position, and they're mm -hmm. just going to get picked off here. Yep. Take in uh, the central trade line and... But these things are so tanky. I mean, they just... Oh, no, they actually get away. Oh, man. Just casual 220 damage. No big deal. Um, And now he's bringing out the Mayan Javelineers. Kind of like a, a, a musketeer-like unit. But again, he's trickling them. And, and, you know, now something I decided to do at this point, Pete and I are like, okay, we've got a boom. Um, So I send some pikes to go shrine hunting, and then Pete gets on water. Mm -hmm. And the northern water. We know the caravels are down here, right? So we figure we're safe up there. And again, they, they send down two caravels. And afterwards, if you watch game one, it'll probably explain why. But we were able to wipe them off water. Um, so I think that's exactly what's going on here. Now, yeah, these Hulkan Javelineers, I mean, they're trying to run around, but it's just a few of them. Yeah, there's only five, or now four, now that one died. And they're coming back in getting more chip damage off of that outpost blockhouse you know and yep i'm kind of learning there so this is okay we're sitting here we're saying all right here's going to come a big fight we've got lots of hand cap gideon by now yep um not able to send his upgrades i'm just building crossbow mainly and then here we go Burning down the blockhouse. Nice. Good flank there off of Pete. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking at this fight, this is this is a tough fight. It's hard to say who's winning, but I, I think there's just not enough pirate or hand cav type. Yeah, the pirates, unfortunately, seem to have locked onto the rusket mess, actually, out of Pete. Mm -hmm. So they were not getting it much, as much value as they normally would have. Exactly. So... Like, this is a, and obviously anytime you're fighting in your opponent's forward like that, and I mean, it was really smart from Bindian to have all these ships out there sitting, but at the same time, you're set far enough back from your paddle site here that they weren't actually able to get ship damage off there. Exactly, and now looking at that, I mean, they have complete control here of the left base. Um, so my Javelineers coming in, looks like they did kill a Vill or two up here, but now I send in the Pikemen. Um, and that fight, I think, went as good as we could hope for. You know, what I mean, we're able to push mm -hmm. them back, and they've overinvested a bit in this water. Again, they're afraid of being knocked off water. They're afraid of Malta and/or Russia booming. And I don't think they've scouted Pete up here. No, and five caravels effectively in that ocean is a way overinvestment. I think three would be sufficient here at this point because if you were to drop your own two caravel shipment and you couldn't maintain the hold, so it's an overinvesting overinvestment there. All right, and I remember at this point, I don't really have too much else to send. I think I just get ready to try to macro to go up to H3 because I'm basically looking at this saying, hey, like, this is tough. And now knowing that they have those boats, we could get docked or landed, you know, putting mm -hmm. a commander a bit on the shore, see if we can zone them off. And we're like, hey, let's just zone off Japan. Like, that's our goal. I now. really like that commander replacement. I really like that placement. 
you know, I even have a two hunting here, which may seem like my usual absent-minded macro, but for once, I promise, there was a reason for that, and that's just for line of sight. Yep, burn down the shrine, and the crossbow again, the scaling of the crossbow, it's not much right now, but it's starting to kick in. Um, they mm -hmm. come back to burn this hospital. Good job. Uh, they're by Gideon, but I think it's kind of like a case of, it's just not enough, and these hospitals are cheap anyways. Yeah, it's 100 wood, and if they're even able to pick off a single pirate, I think that was actually a loss for for Gideon. If they I, they didn't get one, so I wouldn't consider that a true loss, but like, right. that is not a... You're actually right. I didn't even think about that, but you're absolutely correct. It's more, it's almost the exact same um, cost to make a pirate. So unless you yeah. idle them or something. Yeah, which there wasn't any idling going off there, so... I think even just the pot shots coming off of that blockhouse made it not economically effective. And then here we go. Um, so it looks like now, I mean, 170 pop. Gideon's got a decent torp. He doesn't have Engelsberg. Vindian, first to age three. Uh, I would imagine he's probably going to want to get flaming arrows. He's got two shipments. He sends informers again, the Great Buddha. A um, mm -hmm. little bit of a map hack. Smart move there. He's going to see us kind of coming in to invade. Can. Good job. They, they try to get value and line of sight out of that, but those boats now effectively zoned off. Yeah, they're effectively zoned off with that, that very critical neck there. Yep, and, and something You're to... Going up with yep, going up with the um, bishop, which with the uh, upgrade is a fast age up since hospitality, and it gives you a town center, which go with winning court will allow uh, quite a bit of a area. Um, something I should do more often, too, is get a church, but... Hindsight's 2020. So what were you about to say? Uh, basically, I think at this point, I'm going up to three, and I'm making just a lot of crossbow and a lot of pike. And something to think about in this area is a 20% buff to the HP of pikes. Um, hand infantry in particular. Mm. Which... That's absolutely true. Yeah, so it's kind of a, you know, for once, me kind of being a bit to read the map and, and utilize stuff, right? Map's good. Learning map, good. <laughs> yep, and steel bolts right steel off the Steel bolts. And now Pete here, he sent medicine. He sent spice trade. He's on the water. We're about to watch, you know, I think Pete is going to start booming hard. So I think Vindian and Gideon, you know, while Japan can kind of sit in a corner and boom forever. Oh, and of course the Pete raid. The Pete raid. Yeah, oh, we got at least one. Two. Two. Burning down all the torps here. Gideon Ooh. now on yeah, 140 torps. Really we got a church coming in. I would assume a church tech is about to hit. Yumi, Ashigaru, the pirate swarm. Team heavy infantry teams. Those Ashigaru are actually going to be buffed. Um, we see these guys coming at us, and I think we just decide, nope. <laughs> I'm very the, the right move here. Yeah. <laughs> just get out. Just big old nope. And meanwhile, Pete, you know, Pete here, those two Cossacks oh. making a bit of a dent. He's gotten at least five bills at this point with those two Cossacks. Right. It's a huge win. Indian getting his flaming arrows and it looks like he sends two of the they're almost like a galleon equivalent you know i don't know if he meant to raid or not because he's going to send this one naginata just all the way back home um starts to get on those boats does not see yeah. the town center i believe nope does not my 164 now hp or the Pikes, they're not even veteran yet. Vindian here, now with the Portuguese console. So Vindian is now finally booming on water. Mm hmm. Finally taking advantage of the fact that they have ownership of the entire South Sea, but this is Panama, I don't know. But the southern part of the sea, the southern, the southern ocean in this case. Exactly. Now, Gideon, I think coming forward, trying to put some pressure, trying to buy some time. Gonna try to get that rax I'm, now. I'm, I've already built I'm another one. Push here. To do a oh, pretty good siege, to be fair. A pretty good siege. 
But again, I don't believe that to be cost effective, just even with the chip damage. If it were a normal Rax, and then this is uh, it. If you can't, these guys. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, and we... Yeah, no, that, that was... Yeah, oh, that hurts. Yeah, that's, that's probably about a thousand coin just gone there. Gideon now, I mean, kind of stuck in age two. Again, he's, he's retorped. You know, he's doing his best, but those torps aren't exactly on prime real estate. I mean, they're, they're pushed into this corner of the map. The crossbows from yeah. Malta, you know, we've got 18 range now on these bad boys. They're, they're starting to kick in. The score, though, still pretty solid. I mean, you know, Gideon losing a lot really fast there, though. Mm -hmm. It me being me. Dropping a fort. <laughs> Cheeky <you know>. fort. <laughs> yeah. Over here, this town center missed a little bit of action, but I would assume it would be this thing trying to siege the town center. Not being successful. I think we do like a fighting retreat, so I just lose some of my crossbow again. They, they cost yeah, nothing. Yeah. Looking at the deck here from Vindian. Looks like he sent the flaming arrows twice. I think I delete that. Yep. Decided to send even more yeah. defensive forts. The right move at that point, since he had to he had to retreat. Wow, I mean, Vindian here kind of over macroed a tiny bit there. Yeah, three thousand food sitting there. I've got a bunch of stuff though. I shouldn't really talk. Uh, I think I'm trying to get control of the trade posts. I'm gonna grab another native too. Yep, because at some point, mm. all hand infantry. Another great one for your pikes. Yep. And what that allows you to do, too, it allows you to go a lot heavier on the crossbow and a lot fewer on the pikes, right? Because mm -hmm. look at that, 190 HP on the pikes. Mm, good stuff. If you're me. If you're Malta. Mm -hmm. Now I have three, you know, racks production. And this is when Malta's going to start kicking into overdrive. You know, if I remember to make houses and stuff. Level things in life. Mm. Oh, here comes the here. The cheeky pirates again. Mm. I think I'm just waiting for the archaic soldier combat card. But again, I mean, these pirates are good, but now he's kind of separated from the mass. And Yeah. Oh, here come the Colves from Pete. Absolutely clutch. I think he's going to get... Yep. Oh, yeah. Got most of the way on one and one completely eliminated. Grabs another one. Another one down. Yeah, those Colves. Wow, and this is just a great fight for us. Yeah. Um, they don't yeah, have enough. Flaming arrow. Yep. Same range as the yeah, Yumi. And fight any pikes left. Look at that, 210 now HP on the pikes, doing 10 damage a pop. <laughs> Veteran crossbow doing 21. And yeah, this is when Malta goes from like, you know, it's like the meme where it's like call an ambulance, but not for me. Mm -hmm. This is when Malta starts to kick in. Uh, looks like yeah, I only have six on coin. The rest of my stuff on wood. I think I started running out of resources at this point because I had so much going on. Um, Pete booming incredibly well. I believe he has a frigate here. We missed a little bit of water. Yeah, action. he must have. Oh, yeah, he fought him off. Clean him up. Good old Indian trying to boom back in. I mean, Gideon's score now falling significantly behind. He's still mm -hmm. stuck in age two. You know, uh, the units that he wants, he's not able to get the best value out of. And I think that push, I mean, ultimately, that I think cost him a lot of momentum. So now... From this point forward, I think they're going to be stuck on the defensive, and it's going to be up to them to catch yeah. us off, right? It absolutely is. And I, Gideon really needs to have swapped out of pirates by this point. That's, I mean, they're useful in a pinch, but in this situation now, what he's looking at with you, these are not the units he wants from a composition at this point. I'd like to be seeing more you know, Hussar out of him even just because you've got so many crossbow going on there and strelits and ruskets aren't great. But I, the pirates here, I don't think are going to be effective and they're so expensive and pop heavy. Oh, Pete now macroing really heavy, push a pike coming. So again, these pirates, they're going to hit their apex, but they're, they're only H2 units. Um, mm -hmm. They should be really fast here in a second. Now Vindian though, going up all the way to H4. And, you know, this is kind of a scary spot, right? Because Vindian, no slouch. Um, especially his H4. <laughs> right? 
but they're kind of going to have to push back. And yeah, we've got plenty of coves now over here in Team P. Here come the Opries, and you know what? All he needs to do is connect in that back line, mm -hmm. and it might be GG. Custovian Guard, the Halbs, coming out now. Uh, these units are hard to see how fast they are because he's got them all selected. Maybe if they stop moving for a second. Yeah, 6.88 speed, faster than Hassar. Southern movement speed, yeah. Speedy boys. Exactly. But now he's finally able to hit H3. Yep, and he will age up with the Exiled Prince, trying to get up as soon mm -hmm. as possible to get the Outlaw upgrades. Japan now booming, building his TCs at the water for defense. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of, we're lurking. Something that we kept doing in this game is once we realized they had water, and also really their bases are kind of compact back here, is just go out here and like, you know what? We're not going to sit in your base and we're not going to take all of this. We're going to go up here and force fights on our terms and that are at least more favorable for us to run away from it. Oh, I had forgotten about this. Well, you catch them? Uh, I think we do. Uh, I lost your stream there. Oh, you did? One quick second. Technical difficulties, everybody. They happen on live games, and it's been too late, so we're going to keep casting this. All right. Can you see me now? Not yet. I hate your computers. How about now? Not yet. Okay, it says I'm live. Let me try jumping out and back in. There we go. All right. Sorry for that, everybody. Uh, and we're going to keep that in, not edit it out, because we are not that skilled. Uh, but look at that. Catches some vills. Pete's right on top of it. I think I'm in the back just murdering stuff. Crossbows again. Kind of uh, in that crazy strength. Sending German yeah. tongue, finally, right? For a little bit more of an eco boost. <laughs> Casual 25 minute German tongue. Stacking food. Just just stacking res. Not the most efficient mm -hmm. use. But we'll go back to the war crimes of Pete here. Those Opries are on the bills. <laughs> They're just gonna get slaughtered. Uh, kill, you know, Pete finds some tasty pills. Mm -hmm. Oh man, just the war crimes. And again, I mean Vindian has an incredible army here, and we're just kind of going to be like, okay, well, we'll just burn some buildings down, mm -hmm. and then back up. Yeah, this is this is really rough for Gideon at this point, and rough for Vindian too. Look at how inefficient all of these, you know, factory houses are at this point. <laughs> Veteran. All the shrines of the back line aren't getting hunts. They're all out of coin for Sweden. Like this is rough. Yep. And like you guys are playing this really well and not fighting <laughs> on their terms. As you say that, free free coves. <laughs> <laughs> free free coves. Free cove know. donation. Um, yep. Forward commandery. And, you know, it's kind of the same thing again. We're like, hey, we're in the lead, we're grindy. Let's just stick together, fight together. You know, Vindian's in age uh four, but Pete's score now looking incredibly healthy. I'm aging up to four, mm -hmm. Pete's aging up to four. And we're doing something that we've made mistakes in the past. It's just as a general moniker, or not moniker, but a thing to remind yourself, mnemonic. If you're going to age four, like, don't hit the floor. Like, just back up. Don't take fights. You don't have to. Um, you know, this one we're feeling a little bit okay with. A little bit of lag. Looks like it's kind of coming through. Um, but hopefully the wreck stays it's a stable. Big lag. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are holding pretty well. Yes. Like, yeah, again, those pirates are just not paying off here. They're not, and, you know, I mean, Vindian's got the Honored Flaming Arrows. He's got all the good cards. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Pistol Pete now getting the guard upgrades for his Musketeers. And those Rusketeers, man, the more the game goes on, the stronger they get. Um, Malta going for Sicilians because I guess I just didn't have enough food. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hindsight. Yeah, no, just a casual 4,000, 5,000 food, you know. Not, not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Um, but yeah, we, we just kind of back off and we're like, hey, all we have to do is hold the middle game. We're all in age four. Gideon's basically crippled and, you know, Vindian's just playing like a beast. But if you begin, if you watch other series, you've seen us throw commanding leads before. So we're just kind of determined to try to learn from our past mistakes. 
Uh, the Maya Fort even came up for me. <laughs> Could have put it closer to the shore, but I don't know. I didn't even know what this thing did, to be honest with you. It was just res, because I had plenty of wooden food. Yeah, at this point, you're floating so much, you just start getting every everything that you can. Exactly. And yep, we've kind of locked down the middle now. You've got two forts, you've got a blockhouse, we've got TC and a blockhouse up there. The forward commander, he does go down. Um, getting like the upgrades for my farms and coins. Pete now, Colvin Royals, heavy horse guns, guard drill. I mean, Pete's just, he's getting all of the resources. Mm -hmm. And got my guard, let's see, there's a guard, yep, guard pikeman, 266 HP, 14 hand attack. That's pretty healthy looking and 211 HP. 30 attack, 19 range. Just Ooh. multi things. And, you know, at this point, you're getting Vidian. I mean, the score is just going and going. And again, you're just trying to bait a good... If you could just wipe and then just get momentum, that's your way back into this game. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Those Yumi are not going to be cost-effective into this light infantry. It's not something you hear often. No, but against the multi crossbows here, this is... Like, the Yumi are not an effective trade here. No. But flaming arrows, though, very much are. So, you know, we're just kind of skirmishing, spreading out. And again, these guard, does he have the card, I wonder? Puritors, nope, no Puritors toy soldiers. And looking through the res, now it's Gideon's turn to stack food. <laughs> and here are the honored Yumi. Yeah, those flaming arrows are doing work. I mean, we were able to knock out the culves there. So, like, this is, it, but this isn't looking like the wipe that they need. Exactly. Like, it's definitely not, you know, a great fight for you guys. But at the same time, you're fighting them off. You're right under your production buildings. And those ruskets with their incredible cost effectiveness here, your multi crossbows coming out with their incredible cost cost effectiveness like you are basically able to just slam your face into those flaming arrows and win and that was the plan and because i can at this point i'm like let's just keep going up let's you know if i can get those cost effective Ooh. units right even higher upgrades and it gets vindian doing a cheeky uh damio spawn or shogun <laughs> spawn but those uh yamabushi not able to really connect or do much and here we are again, you know, these units are just streaming. Guard Rusketeers, Arbalesters, continuing to go up in efficiency. And if we look over here, I mean, we've just got economy all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Look at that Vindian. Just, he's waiting. He's waiting to be pushed he, off water. Waiting. And this is such an overinvestment. Because how many fishing boats does he have? At just this a point. few. I mean, the canoes could be fishing too, for what it's worth. They could, yeah, they could be, but he doesn't have them fishing, so it's a heavy overinvestment there in the water. And it looks like Jaegers from the church coming in now um, hmm. for Gideon, and yeah, Gideon now losing more vills. Oof. Just having a rough time, Gideon. Yeah, and Gideon's in a really tough spot now here because he's stuck in three. Which means he can't get effective plantations going. He's lost. At this point, there's no more coin sources for him to hoard. So his only real option at this point for coin would be to try to go for the whales on the water. So he's in a really rough spot here. I do like that idea of the um, coin going for like whales or something, especially because Vindian wasn't doing. Again, hindsight's always twenty twenty, but uh, it's always twenty twenty. Exactly. So coming this in is with a the... really rough spot for for Sweden at this point. Exactly. And again, I mean, Gideon, or Vindian, he's he's trading pretty well. Um, but he's just, especially if Imperial Arbalesters comes in, his units are going to get completely outclassed. Mm -hmm. A little bit more lag coming in. Gideon, though, he makes it to age four like an absolute he champion. He makes it to age four. Sells all that. So it must have sold all that food and got up and oh, 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 I see a treat coming in. Yeah. So I remember at this point, I was like, all right, if they're going to take the water in the south, like, what's the one thing? And as soon as I start sending it, I remember I'm picking Pete. I'm like, hey, I wonder what this, uh, wonder what this ship does. 
So we've got the Imperial <laughs> Arbalesters in, right? At this point, we're, we're feeling very confident. So I'm like, you know, I never get to send this stupid boat anyways. Oh, hello. Oh, and there's nothing they can do against this. I mean, he's got his whole navy, but all of those investments for a free car. Again, the Maltese battleship is free. And while that's going on, we're skirmishing in the center. Mm hmm. Splitting his attention there. Mm -hmm. Again, he hasn't quite paid attention. I remember you pinging because I'm just like, bro. Look at her go. <laughs> like, look at the value. It's an immense amount of value at that card. And while this is going on, Vindian, again, these Yumi, they're just not. They're just completely outscaled. They're the pirates. Not. Yeah. Getting crushed. At this point, even the flaming arrows aren't a counter to the Arbalesters. Oh, and they explode. <laughs> so at the very end, he's left with just three, and I think I send a ship next. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what about the Zebek? Oh, the Zebeks. Yeah, but even the flaming arrows at this point with you, the Imperial Arbalesters, hmm. with, at this point, you know, basically fully HP buff crossbows, like the flaming arrows don't counter the crossbows. Nope. And I think at this point, you know, here comes the Naginata, um, but it, it's looking pretty grim. And at this point, I, I think they're just going to get ground down. The Zebek comes. Mm -hmm. is a better frigate basically yep de frigate dlc frigate De frigate all right imperial text now coming in for my mm. economy uh, and i believe pete is getting ready to go imperial yep yep oh he's researching it for the general okay so and yeah we're just gonna just kind of walk it in yeah and pete with his famous wood stack <laughs> ninjas coming in i mean they're, they're trying to throw everything at the kitchen sink um, I believe we do go up here and say, hey, there's some boats up here. So P goes to shut it down. And mm -hmm. just like that, Those his entire gone. his entire water eco of like four or five cards is countered by two. By two. And all the wood, you know, all those boats. So I think at this point, it, you know, there's no, they're choked out, right? There's no avenues for them to go anywhere. Uh, Pete's going up to Imperial. Our economies are better. And Gideon's just crippled. He's off the map. Sweden does need map control for as strong as it can be. I mean, Sweden needs, like, you know, Swedish cockroach is all about hiding things across the map. Like, if you're starved out, there's nothing you can do to Sweden. So it's a really rough spot for getting in here. Exactly. And again, we're just kind of, again, try not to throw, try not to lose a fight. We're feeling really good, but, you know, again, um, this map has left bitter memories in many, many people's minds, so... Um, yeah, and that, there's still danger out there. Exactly. Now the heavy cannons making good work. I think I have to literally... Oh, they go down, though. Mm -hmm. Double keeps up him. And yep, now, I mean, it's just it's just spamming crossbows, spamming pi Imperial mm -hmm. Pikes, 333 HP. Not bad. Oh, man. What do I even send here? Yeah, squires. Squires, yep, for production rates, yep. Vindian calling it first. Mm. Gideon giving the GG well play, and just Calls like the that. the GG, and that's the game. Wow, I was even tired casting it a little bit, to be completely honest with you. I forgot what an absolute <laughs> slugfest that was. So uh, I'll let you go first, because I've been talking a lot. What are your thoughts uh, initially? That was a grindy game. <laughs> that was a really grindy game. And I think it was really well executed by by Team P here. And I think ultimately what the clutch aspect of this was how well you starved Sweden out. By keeping the pressure up on those vacant areas of the map, keeping him starved out, keeping him starved of coin and like allowed you guys to just grind down and it you know it wasn't a 2v1 but it was at times it was almost a 2v1.5 where he where sweden was never able to really get back in after some of those 
losses off the Pirates. So it was a really well executed game and really shows the power of both Russia and Malta for a long game where Malta build up those shipments. You're getting all that wonderful 2% extra off of each shipment. And then just Russia with the cost effectiveness where that's where Russia really shines is when they're able to be cost effective in the late game like this, where you're grinding like that. That's where this does great. And yeah, look at that graph there with the unit count. Uh, the power the of Pete raid. The power of Pete raids. Power and you're not it this graph doesn't show it, but you're knocking down shrines, you're knocking down torps, you're keeping huge pressure, and you're just preventing Sweden from ever really getting into it. And they're look, yeah, it's all pirates. And pirates are four or five pop? I think five they're pop. Four, pirates are yeah, five, five pop, four yeah. or five pop. Yeah, they're very expensive units. Um I think Gideon, you know, he, he used him to the max. And it's funny that you said earlier on, like, a Hussar switch would have been nice because we were just talking after the game. We both felt, at least me and Pete, Pete being a Sweden player, um, that a little bit more standard Hussar play in the middle and transition after they had the initiative, right, and they pushed us back, um, could have sealed the deal. You know, I, I think ultimately, too, this map can be a bit tricky for Sweden because those coin mines, they run out soon. Um, so not having the ability to reboom. And then kind of japan and you know japan can sit in a corner and do this yes mm -hmm. um sweden cannot ultimately and so they, they needed to lock at least the center of the map down and they just weren't able to they weren't booming freely enough on water i think after the game one um they over invested and, and i think it was just the tiniest mistakes i mean they got value out of their shipments early on it wasn't like they got no value out of the choices in fact like i said they had the initiative especially after the, in the first push um I just don't think they were able to seal the deal and eventually the scaling of our two sieves um, were able to swing through. And so with that, me and Pete yeah. move on uh, to the next round um, and Gideon Vidian, they go and they will fight in a lower bracket, but I'm sure we will see more of these guys. Um, again, always tricky players, always very intelligent. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, I just think me and Pete had a little bit more of a focused strategy and a fo cohesive um, effort together, you know, Pete's call in particular to hit the interior, not keep hitting the base, especially with the boats on the shore, allowed us mm -hmm. to maximize our efficiency of units, especially while being on the back foot. Um, also, you know, mastery of that water. They could have done some cheeky raids. They could have given us the runaround, but they just weren't able to. So uh, GG to everyone involved. And, uh, you know, again, this has been a, a really fun series between these guys, always very close to the wire. And uh, we're, we're even throughout all of the tournaments we've played between these two. So hats off to them. I'm sure Gideon, if you watch, um, all of your insight will always be welcome because you have good insight. And same thing with Vindian. So I'd love to hear guys' thoughts. Uh, any final comments Hello, before yeah. we wrap this up? Uh, I'm rather disappointed. You should have made one more crossbow. <laughs> 299. <laughs> Should have been three hundred. <laughs> for the record, I made uh, almost ninety. I made ninety pikes. pikes. <laughs> so it was not a monocomp. Um, and Pete, it of was course, not a monocomp. Making a bunch of stuff. But really well executed game here. I think both sides played really well. Like you were saying, it's the little things that end up tipping the scales here, and. I think it was a really well done game. Like, I do hope that, you know, we get some comments and input from uh, Gideon, you know, like what what were some of the focuses here going on and, you know, what, what drove some of these choices just so we can get some of that insight. But really well executed game on both sides. And I think uh, Team P here got a well earned win and, you know, really deserve that move up on the bracket. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming in. And if you made it this far, you know, like, subscribe, yada, yada. Um, you know, again, with the casting, um, we're trying to get all the lower brackets finished up here. So we've got a few more to cast, uh, hopefully here in the next week. And that should give you guys plenty of the ever uh, present content that I think you guys all like. Um, hopefully our main man, McCleaves, is able to organize them all nice, too, so you guys can watch series as much as we can. Again, there's out of syncs all over the place. But I think this was one of maybe seven or eight series that was clean start to finish so uh hope you all enjoyed it hope you're enjoying this and uh as we get ready for our quarter semi and finals 
um, we'll be able to cast those in their entirety. So uh, I will see you all on the next one and have a good day.